In this video, we will show you how to configure the 2910 transmitter using the onboard switches. At this point, you should have the unit address, the communication settings based on the protocol you're using, the measurement units, and if you have a temperature probe connected or limit switches configured, you will need their details as well. First, configure the unit address. We will set the switches marked SW1, SW2, and SW3. The address range can be set from 000 to 999. For example, to set an address of 1, set SW1 to 0, SW2 to 0, and SW3 to 1. We'll set ours to 19, so switch settings 0, 1, and 9. Use a fine tip screwdriver to set these switches. Once the unit address is set, press SW7 to save the change and reset the CPU. Next, we use SW4 to choose the communication setting. Ours is a replacement for a Varic 1900 Mark Space transmitter with high speed communications and forward rotation, position zero, most cases for a Varic 1900. But check the table in the 2910 manual and select a position that matches the configuration of the unit you've replaced. Once the communication switch is set, press SW7 again to save the change and reset the CPU. The 2910 FTT can transmit unit data in English or metric format. Rotate switch SW5 to the appropriate position. We'll use decimal English, setting 1 in our example. But again, you should match the configuration of the unit you replaced, so check the manual. After selecting the data format, press SW7 again to save the change. To accurately obtain readings from a spot temperature RTD, the new encoder must be set to match the RTD type and temperature format. Switch SW6 configures this. We are setting this to match a copper 90 Fahrenheit RTD without an offset, position 4. But again, check your required setting in the manual. And once again, press SW7 to save the change. Now we need to calibrate the transmitter for the level in the tank. You should perform a manual measurement of the tank a hand dip if you're not sure about the exact product level. There are four ways to view the current configured level in the encoder. We'll use the diagnostic LEDs built into the encoder electronics board. But you can use a host system such as Fuels Manager, you can connect a laptop to the transmitter running VRTU software, or you can use a handheld transmitter analyzer. Keep in mind that some analyzers have limits. For example, if you're using the VTA1000, you'll get an invalid level reading if your tank's level is above 78 feet. To use the LED method, loosen the set screw on the encoder drive shaft slotted coupling. Just enough so that the encoder rotates freely without rotating the coupling. Be careful not to loosen it too much or the coupling will fall. Now activate the LEDs on the communication circuit board by pressing switch SW8. The LEDs will be enabled for about three minutes. The level indicated by the LEDs is the same whether you set the encoder to forward or reverse reading. The LEDs present the level in a binary format with D1 through D4 representing the tens digit, D5 through D8 representing the unit digit, D9 through D12 representing the decimal tens, and D13 through D16 representing the decimal one hundreds value. The format can be English or metric, depending on the data format we set using the SW5 switch. The manual includes binary conversion tables for English and metric units, so find the LED combination that matches your level reading as a decimal unit. Rotate the encoder shaft until your level reading is displayed by the LEDs. Tighten the set screw on the encoder drive shaft slotted coupling to lock it into place and set this level. At this point, it's good practice to check the host communications LEDs 21 and 22 flash on and off when the transmitter is OK. If LED 21 does not flash, there is a problem with the CPU and you should contact Varic to return the unit for service. LED 22 flashes based on the pull rate from the host. If it is continually lit or not at all, then it is not communicating with the host system. Remember to press SW8 to activate the LEDs. At this point, the transmitter is configured and ready to use. 
You can replace the cover and expect to see accurate inventory readings in the connected host system. If you have limit switches, watch our other video to understand how to correctly set these level alarms. Thanks for watching.